What is software architecture? Martin Fowler. I'm Chris Tess. I'm a KMP developer. Tech support said they're coming out Tuesday. Close that portal up. I'm just hoping, I'm hoping, I'm praying. Well, you know, I'm not going to hope very too much. I'm doing another review uh, of a dev video on dev tools made simple. It does little clips of stuff, like two minute clips of architecture, software architecture videos. And I like to like, I've been tearing apart Uncle Bob. I figure I'll give Uncle Bob a little break and, and listen to, to Martin Fowler. Martin Fowler's all right, but he's still in that, conver he's still in this, I mean, He's in this like uh, book conference, uh, con uh, uh, consulting, uh, marketing uh, vector thing. He's more of the. He's pretty moral school. He's. I think he's one of the better ones, but still, he's like. These are just suggestions, people. These are not laws. I know people want them to be. That's the thing. As engineers, we want to have a law behind this stuff. And the thing about computer stuff, science and computer, all this computer stuff, it's really more about people. I know. Ooh, it's more of a social, sociological thing that we're using the machine to simulate and, and, uh, and orchestrate and enhance our social stuff. That's what it's turned into now, whether it's business social or, or, or just interactions between each other. And, um, yeah, that's the thing. Is it's not as technical a thing as it used to be. That we still have this computer engineering thing, which should be a, a separate field. Like maybe operating systems are sort of in there, but even then, it's sort of it's really drawing on what humans are trying to use these machines for. Because the machine doesn't give a fuck. It just it'll do whatever you say. You know, it doesn't care. But the thing is, like, what are what are our imagination of what the symbolic manipulator transmitter receiver thing is? That's that's it's just our limits of our imagination at this point. So, but uh, but there's also there's we there's tools that people people think there's still lots of places where these computers can be used and be implemented and help out people. Maybe not can make a billion dollars, but maybe make a hundred thousand or fifty thousand or hundred seven. There's all kinds of micro niches everywhere. People like oh, it's like there's all kinds of little niches. All right, let's see what Margaret look. Um, Martin Fowler has enough enough waffling. So if you're trying to think about your software system and what its architecture is, what you the first thing you have to do is you have to figure out well what is important. What yeah, the problem and the customers. Well, maybe the VC. Maybe the VC is important. Maybe we need to get really good demos. Maybe it's the it's some sort of engineer somewhere, which is the end user, I guess. If you you know some somebody who's out there wants the most precise thing, it's like needs all the data all the time. Uh, so it's just what is the problem space? Does the problem space defines your architecture? Wh what are you doing? How do you have to ingest a bunch of data? Are you sending a bunch of data out? Are you crunching a lot of data? Do you have to put it someplace? Is some small little niche thing where you just need to do a crud app, but it has to be flavored in just the right way. We have to figure figure out what that flavor is for our particular customers that we want in this problem space that we decided. Let's keep going. What do we as the lead the <laughs> I love it. I love DevTools puts he always puts this code in here. This is the most this is like is this a Java? Yeah, this is this is Java, yeah. He's also sometimes he puts Kotlin in there. And I'm like, okay, cool. So he's doing some back end stuff. All right, here we go. Some client database for some a bank, a bank simulator. Okay, here we go. I, I maybe he might be a student, I can't tell. Technical leadership of a project considered to be the most important things in there. Or even on a solo project, what is the key things about this um, system? What is the most important thing in the code base that I have to keep at the top of my head when I'm working on it? <sighs> Probably, hopefully minimal. Hopefully a minimum. We keep just go, go, we have a central thing that does this thing and it keeps the stuff at the core and this, the separate little things are all like in the clean. I know I hate that. I hate Uncle Bob's word, but the thing where there's, a core application, and then there's some interfaces along the ring of that, and then the app never talks to the uh, to that. The app never go, jumps over the interfaces; it always has to go through some sort of interface module. Those things can plug into the systems. You know, your 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 UI and your database and network and all all the stuff. If it, if you mean that, okay. That decision about what is important is really the key thing that goes on. And that is really the thing that trumps everything else. 
Yeah, some of these. So this is Martin Farrell is also just doing the same thing I hate with Bob because he's not getting real like specific and not giving any examples. I hope he gives an example. I haven't previewed this clip. I hope he gives an example here. So that if people ask me what my definition of architecture it is, I follow Ralph in this and I say it's the important stuff. But if I don't even know what does that even mean? I mean your architecture is like what processors are hooked up to what things that are hooked up to what other processors and how those things are all distributed. Like you got input devices, you got output devices, you have emails, you got what the important things. I mean, all of it's important. If you drop off the emails and don't, you can still process the orders, but you're not going to send emails out. Well, I mean, I guess you can still process the orders, but without people getting invoices saying, hey, we got your order. Hey, it's shipping out. They get a little annoyed. If they need to change their, if they need to change their password and they can't get any emails, that might be a, that might be a problem. I mean, still, because if you have an order system, people can still place the orders, but it's all kind of important, man. I, I, so these, these, these vague, vagary terms, they sound good. I guess they sound good, but it's just too vague. If you go to a reasonably healthy software project and you... What does that mean? Reasonably healthy? What does that, what does that mean? Reasonably healthy? I, what does that even... Okay, let's keep going. Talk to the expert developers on that project. What is an expert developer? What about... The, what, do you have a, how about just the regular developers? Do you, have, do you have to talk to the experts? Maybe it's the experts that aren't doing. It. Maybe the experts are doing are doing architecture, and there's the the lowly engine, the lowly developer on the bottom. He's the one that's actually implementing this stuff. You don't want to hear from don't want to hear from him. He's not important. Okay, Martin Fowler. The people who are most capable, who are most familiar with a code base, they will have some common understanding of how the thing works. And will they? Are you sure? One hundred percent. They'll have some understanding. I mean, I guess we'll all have some. We all have some understanding of it. What are you talking about, man? All right, let's keep going. I'll, let's, I'll, be, I'll be a little softer on him, but let's, I'm starting to treat him like Uncle Bob. <laughs> like looking at him sideways about everything he says is super vague. Let's keep going. Understanding that is effectively the architecture. And I thought you said it was the important things. Now you're saying it's the common understanding. See, uh. Again, this is some hypnotic induction stuff because you're confusing a bunch of stuff together. And I'm not sure what I'm supposed to focus in on because you're changing definitions within 30 seconds. Right, let's keep and going. this is important because it is also a, brings out the fact that architecture is very much a social thing. I, I agree. <laughs> yeah, it totally is. It's a social thing because it's trying to create business solutions that are for people, which... People, I don't know if you noticed this, they're kind of social. <laughs> In the way that if you give them what they like, they give you your money. They give you their money. <laughs> if you give them if you give them something they want, they will give you gladly their money. If that's what you mean by social, then yes. <laughs> it is that fuzzy and complicated logic helper. Oh my goodness. Swap it. All right. Uh, I think this is a guy. I can't tell if this is a kid. I think this is a, a young person, a young adult. This is maybe his, his homework or something. Embedded sure. understanding that really matters. And yet, yeah, there may be diagrams here and there. There might be documents here and there. And they may have architecture written on them. But they're just a representation, and usually an imperfect representation, of that shared understanding. Always. Every, th every symbolic representation is... All software, all books, all art is an imperfect representation of someone's imagination of what the thing's supposed to be. Martin! And what you're trying to do with a software project, particularly as software projects grow, is you want to make sure you have a good shared understanding. Well, that's the trick, isn't it? Oh, man. Yes, we would like to have everybody on the same page knowing what the product is. Like, what we're making, the solution that we're making for the problem, for the, that our customers, whether it's the VC 
or the actual paying customers who are using the service or they're buying the service or somebody else that's going to be using the service is we have a problem, a solution for that customer that we can, that we can make and provide at a profit so we can stay employed and put the lights on and send kids to college and new cars and all that stuff. It's not, it's not this high fluting thing. I don't know. It's like, we talk about it in this such a strange way. And I can't tell if they're doing the sales. Is, there, is this like a manager speak, corporate speak? I can't tell who they're messaging this for because it's so vague that anyone can like imagine. It's like, and he also says it in a way like, as long as you get this straight, then your software project will be on track. And he's seen other good software projects. And he knows what they look like and he can get yours there. It's like, because everyone's having these same problems. And a lot of it's not the architecture software solutions. A lot of it's just like how you approach these things, what you make important, setting things up for success, things to be supported later so people don't leave after a year and a half because they get so frustrated. They can't change anything because everything's locked in place and they have to get 16 different permissions from 35 different people just to make one small change. It's like, oh man, it's no fun no more. So yeah, that's a lot of that stuff. Let's keep going between the people who are leading the project. That's really what matters. Why, it's the, only the people leading it? Shouldn't everybody kind of understand how it works since they're implementing it and putting things in motion and creating APIs and defining the functionality and the kinds of messages the system will handle and sustain and set up for changing? You wouldn't want the people involved at the bottom, just the leadership? Okay. All right, well, I... I, I you're on my list now, Mr. Martin Fowler. You better, you better shape up your game. I don't know if he's even doing it anymore. All right, give me a like and subscribe, and I'll leave links to their other stuff and my and my free course, uh, how to program from the ground up. It's all free. I don't, I'm not telling telling you anything. I just want to star on GitHub. All right, I'll talk to you later.